Well, it was a stunning 100 by Fakhar Zaman, really leading the way for Pakistan. He set it up nicely at the top, this run chase. It was crucial for him to get the runs in order to get there. And uh, he's got quite a record in this particular format. Well, this is how it looked like. New Zealand made 288 for 7 in their 50 overs, perhaps short of runs. Daryl Mitchell, what a knock by him, 113 in just 115 balls. And then Will Young chipping in. In response, Pakistan, though, they were quite relentless. Fakhar Zaman at the top making 117. Imam ul Haq, Babar and Rizwan all chipping in. Pakistan winning comfortably by five wickets. Hello and welcome to the Solar Energy Inverex Pitch Side Show. A bit of a different uh, setup here because there has been a bit of a drizzle going around in Pindi. I've been joined by Grant Elliott and Sana Meer in unfamiliar conditions, I would say. But um, Pakistan, let's, uh, let's talk about Pakistan's uh, win. Uh, Sana, it was important for them to start on a winning note because New Zealand were able to draw that series, uh, the T20 International Series. But coming back in the ODI format, it's a format that Pakistan has to do well in because remember, there's also a World Cup at the end of the year. Absolutely. There's preparation for the World Cup and then New Zealand were able to beat Pakistan 2-1 in the series this year in January. So of course there's a lot going on there. Uh, the T20 series, Pakistan was two up. So they have to start well and then they have to keep the momentum. What from, a, <laughs> from a New Zealand perspective though, I mean Darrell Mitchell fabulous uh, with a bat, you know, he, we know what he can do. But overall, when you look back at the game, where do you think they lost it? Yeah, I think it's interesting. You say where they lost it. Um, I want to say Daryl Mitchell batted well. Will Young, another opportunity at the top. He batted well as well. So the foundation was set very similar. And we saw at the 26 over mark that both teams were neck and neck. I think that potentially we lost it at the death and maybe at the power play. Only 49 runs at the power play. And um, at the death, I think we got 50 odd. So, yeah, we, we, lo we lost our way in those two sectors of the game. Through the middle, we were excellent. So it was tough, though. Pakistan bowled well. The ball was reversing. And uh, they're, they're brilliant at the death, Pakistan. Good Yorkers. Nasim Shah was exceptional. Yeah, Nasim Shah was exceptional in these conditions to be bowling the way he did um, on that flat wicket. Kudos to him, uh, of course. But for Pakistan, the run chase was important. A good start was important. And that's what they got in the form of Fakhar Zaman, who's also a hero of the match. Hero of the match. Brought to you by Inverix Solar Energy. Well, you look at the kind of knock that Fakhar Zaman played today, son. I mean, 117 in 114 balls. He's done it before as well. He has hundreds in this format. Absolutely, but this hundred is a little bit different. He was in command and almost a chanceless innings. Um, he played the spinners really well. He played the fast bowlers really well. He did use his release shot, but he also uh, played on the offside. Looked really, really comfortable today. Yeah, it was one of the, the better innings I think I've seen Fakhar Zaman play. He was poised. He, he wasn't erratic. We see him using his feet a lot early on. And actually, you know, every now and then Fakhar Zaman gives his wicket away. But you can see there, a lot squarer the wicket. Uh, we had, you know, a few straight. Daryl Mitchell was quite straight to the wicket. However, Fakhar Zaman was more behind square and, and square of the wicket. But it was a, a Fakhar Zaman innings. I think, you know, it was explosive. But I think for me, the reason why it was the best innings he's played is he was poised. He just looked in total control the whole time. He, and, and also just on Fakhar Zaman, you know, he seems to pair really well with Imam ul Haq on the other end. It's not the first time that these two have got going. It seems like they have a great understanding between each other. Absolutely, and just wanted to add the balance uh, was really good in his batting. And these two, uh, the partnerships have been coming more than 2,000 runs be between these two. And today, 124 of 128. Uh, both of them look really comfortable, both on the fast bowlers and spinners. They have their own different areas and different strokes. And that's and the calling, the running between the wickets, the calling, that has been pretty good as well. So 2,000 runs for uh, opening partnership, it's not... Uh, not an easy thing. I think Imam al -Haq also mentioned in one of his interviews that his favourite partner on the other end is Fakhar Zaman. And 
perhaps one of the reasons is because of the fact that he tends to do really well and like you said the running between the wickets uh, the boundary hitting it, it, it's a great package these two together but for now let's have a look at the stat attack stat attack brought to you by Inverix solar energy well we're talking about most partnership runs by left-handed opening pairs uh, and Fakhar and Imam are number three uh, on that list, they've got 2,215 runs. Hayden and Gilchrist right at the top. Amir Suhail, Saeed Amran. I mean, look at that list. Look at the list of players that you've got here. Jaya Surya, uh, and Ranga, Gail and Chandapal. And there you have it. You have uh, Fakhar and Imam uh, Gran. I mean, it, it's always, it, you talk about bowling in partnerships. There's also something called, you know, batting in partnerships. And, and, and it helps to have a partner who's understanding on the other end and you complement each other. It's like a relationship, isn't it? <laughs> the opening batters, you know, communication. But I also think that they have to complement each other. So one of the things that Fakhar Zaman does well is he's aggressive. And then you've got Imam al Haq, where he actually gives the strike to Fakhar Zaman. He puts away the bad ball, but he's more of a test player, I'd say. A little bit like Will Young's innings. But they complement each other so well. And when you have a batter who's aggressive and wants to feel bat on ball mm. and hit boundaries, he wants as much strike as possible. So rotating the strike is important. And I think that that's why these two are very successful. They complement each other perfectly. As you mentioned, running between the wickets isn't a problem. But what about the combination in terms of you know, having a left -hand, two left-handed openers? Because normally, if you look at teams and the strategies that they have, they always prefer to have a left-right combination just so that you know, they get to face uh, different kinds of bowlers and it gives a different dimension. How do you look at this? Uh, I think that's also a part of the, their success because generally uh, most bowlers are more used to uh, bowling to right-handed right handed batters. Generally in the world they are more right handed batters so in the nets when you're bowling as a bowler you mostly bowl to the right handers so now once there's a, both the left hand combined, uh, left hand batters are on the crease then your lengths have to be only to the left handers and sometimes that can put bowlers off. Yeah it can definitely disrupt their plans and their rhythm whatever it is it seems to be working really really well uh, for Pakistan and that was the uh, stat attack for you. Stat Attack, brought to you by Inverix Solar Energy. All right, uh, great start to the ODI series for Pakistan. They are leading 1-0 and they want to capitalize on that in the next One Day International as well. But for now, we'll take a short break. Back on the Inverix Solar Energy pitch side show, well, the batting was good. We spoke about Fakhar Zaman and Imam al Haq and their partnership. But the real deal uh, for us, uh, I suppose, was Naseem Shah. In these conditions, to be bowling the way he did and not even conceding, well, conceding one boundary in his 10 overs, it speaks volumes of uh, how far he's come along, Sana. Sana, I mean, I'm going to let you talk about Naseem Shah because really he seems to be evolving as a bowler. Absolutely, and the lens he hit, the seam movement, the swing he was able to generate and then at the death overs, the Yorkers he was able to execute. I think it, it's a high, high skill game and we have seen time and again when they, whenever there's pressure he stands up and Shaheen Afridi got injured in the World Cup, he just came onto the scene and, and bowled as a senior bowler and today also we, he was leading the attack. He's so passionate about his, his bowling ground. I mean that's the one thing that's very evident when you watch him. He's got that um, fighting element in him whenever he's out there. So, I mean, what, what's impressed you about him? I think the, the thing that's impressed me the most about Naseem Shah is that when he started, he was quite raw. There was no balls. There was wides. Mm. Uh, he was a little bit all over the show. Whereas now, he's starting the innings. I mean, the first delivery that he bowled was right on the money. Back of the length, asking questions. And he did that throughout his innings. And I, I think that once you get that stock delivery right and you're moving the ball and obviously he bowls at pace, it's exciting, but then it's the skill of being able to bowl the Yorker and bowl the change-ups. And we've seen that with Harris Ralph. He's done it throughout his career now. He's grown into being an excellent bowler and now we're seeing it from Nassim Shah. There's still certain areas that Pakistan needs to work on and improve, uh, Sana, just in terms of looking ahead to the World Cup. And fielding is one area which can definitely not be overlooked. Remember, you're looking at the World Cup, you'll be competing against the very best. 
and this is an area where they were rather sloppy absolutely i think they at least gave away 20 25 runs in the field uh, that was at least um, and against a good team when they are big teams like australia new zealand when they will have their senior players back who are not in this competition they'll make you pay in the last 10 overs you won't be able to contain them for 60 odd runs so these 20 25 runs can be the difference between winning and losing yeah i, I agree with sana and i reckon that's why the game went so long because mm. new zealand should have really lost the game in the 45th 44th mm. over but because they keep fighting because of the fielding that was maybe the difference between the two teams and why the game just went on to towards the last over because new zealand mm. their fielding always backs up the bowling so if pakistan can tighten that up find 20 20 more runs in the field mm. unbeatable Absolutely you're talking about Pakistan improving in certain areas one thing that has only improved over the last uh, few months is the crowd turnout especially in Pindi you've got to hand it over to them uh, regardless of whether it's uh, Ramadan or whether it's uh, Eid or whatever you you want to look at whichever way you want to look at the crowd has turned up in huge numbers even for this one day international it was no different they deserved a treat today and let's find out from Mehek what they have to say fresh format and a fresh beginning for the two teams but it was Pakistan who came out in cracking style here and capitalized on a lead by getting that first win under their belt in this first ODI against New Zealand and let's go speak to the fans and ask them how thrilling it was for them to watch Pakistan give such a superb performance here Pakistan ki terrific batting ke bare mein aaj baat kare to wo chase kar rahe the aur Fakhar Zaman ne wo century banayi Imam Al Haq ne half century banayi Babar Azam ne apne um, international 12000 runs complete kiye to overall Pakistan ko is tarah batting karte hue dekhte hue aapko kaisa feel hua Mujhe kafi acha feel hua mujhe lagta hai ki aaj hamari team ne kafi achhi aur stable base banayi thi match ke shuru mein aur Pakistani team ne aur matlab ke jo pehle do players ki partnership thi which lasted a good while उसने काफ़ी अच्छी फाउंडेशन बनाई पूरी बैटिंग लाइन के लिए और वो काफ़ी इंपॉर्टेंट थी तकरीबन मोस्टली उन्होंने रन बनाए अच्छे और बाबर ने भी अच्छा सस्टेन किया अपनी बैटिंग में एक बिल्कुल ही केम क्लोज टू गेटिंग गेटिंग आउट लेकिन मतलब उसके बाद ही स्टेट देयर एंड ही प्लेड वेल न्यूजीलैंड बेशक आज मैच हार गए लेकिन डारल मिचल ने अपनी जो सेंचुरी बनाई थी उस फर्स्ट इनिंग्स में और जिस तरह आपने सेंचुरीज दोनों साइड से देखी है आउट क्लास बैटिंग हमने ओवरऑल देखी है इस मैच में तो इस तरह का मैच आपको बहुत एक्साइटिंग लगा था बिल्कुल ऐसी बात है क्योंकि एक टाइम मैच बिल्कुल ही टफ हो गया था क्योंकि एक तरफ सेंचुरी हो गई थी और न्यूजीलैंड बहुत टफ टीम है माना गया है लेकिन पाकिस्तान के आज टॉप ऑर्डर की वजह से न्यूजीलैंड के जो टेस्ट मैच प्लेयर है वो नहीं चल सके सही से अच्छा पिछले मैच के बाद और पिछली सीरीज के बाद आपका दिल तो दुखा ही होगा थोड़ा सा टूटा भी होगा लेकिन आज की ब्रिलियंट टर्न अराउंड के बाद जो पाकिस्तान ने हमें दिखाई है और बैटिंग भी बहुत अच्छी की है बॉलिंग भी बहुत अच्छी की है तो आप आज ओवरऑल पाकिस्तान की परफॉर्मेंस के बारे में क्या कहेंगे और आप कितने खुश हैं इस जीत के साथ ओवरऑल पाकिस्तान की परफॉर्मेंस बहुत अच्छी रही शुरू में लगा था कि न्यूजीलैंड साढ़े तीन सौ तीन सौ प्लस स्कोर करेगी लेकिन इन दी एंड नसीम शाह और स्पेशली शहीन ने बहुत अच्छी बॉलिंग की कैचेस कुछ ड्रॉप हुए लेकिन वो मैच का हिस्सा है और बैटिंग तो आउटस्टैंडिंग थी खास करके फ़खर जमान की और जिस तरह से इमाम बाबर ने साहब ने बाया मैं कह रहा आउटस्टैंडिंग थी और बहुत मजा आया मैच देखकर आपका दिल बिल्कुल फुल है आज का मैच देखने के बाद बहुत क्योंकि हमने टी ट्वेंटी सीरीज का बदला भी उनसे लेना था होम सीरीज हम जीत तो नहीं सके लेकिन बराबर तो हमने कर दी इनशाला ये ओडिया सीरीज हम जीतेंगे तीन सिफर से जीतेंगे चलिए बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया कि आपने हमें अपना टाइम दिया बहुत ही अच्छी राय भी दी एंड एज वी कैन सी आफ्टर पाकिस्तान सुपर परफॉर्मेंस हियर टुडे द फैंस आर लीविंग द स्टेडियम ग्लीमिंग विद एब्सोल्यूट हैप्पीनेस बट ओनली वन ओडीआई हैज हैपेंड सो फार एंड देयर आर स्टिल फोर मोर टू गो सो एंड सो नेक्स्ट टाइम इट्स गुड बाय फ्रॉम मी एंड आई विल सी यू ऑल सून Thanks a lot Mehek and it's that time of the night when I thank you guys as well Sana and Grant for saving the day considering the fact that it started to pour down at that point of time but it's just nice to have you guys here once again but of course we will be meeting once again for the second one day international this was just the first one and we have another one that is taking place in Pindi on the 29th of April after which you move over to Karachi for the remaining one day internationals just a quick reminder we will be on air at 2:45 pm 
from Pindi Cricket Stadium and that will be on the 29th of April. All right, thank you so much once again to both my guests and thank you so much to all of you for watching our coverage. I hope you guys enjoyed the first One Day International. We certainly did. A magnificent hundreds by both sides and plenty of entertainment. Until next time, it's goodbye. Good use of the feet and got right underneath that for a maximum. That will bring up a second 50 in one day internationals for Will Young. Good looking shot, excellent shot to get to 100. Second one day international 100 for Daryl Mitchell. Now that's a good shot. Runs in. For Fakhar Zaman and for Pakistan. The crowd are on their feet because Fakhar Zaman has back.